where are we with AI today? Um, we can kind of sense the world. We can understand what you're saying. We can transcribe what you're saying and even map it to some actions. Uh, we can understand what you're writing, even try to diagnose an ailment through x-rays or MRI, or even um, explain what's in an image. Um, we're getting better at doing uh, object detection, for sure. Uh, not quite there yet, but we're getting better. Um, but when we actually go out and talk to business leaders, when they find out that we have some sort of AI, their first request is, can you give me some insights? Can you predict my revenue? Can you predict you know, my crop yield? It's all about more and more insights, more and more charts, yet more things for me to look at before I make my decision. But somehow, we're thinking that that decision making is a human task based on our rules or intuition. But we should actually use AI to do the decision making as well, or at least help us with the decision making. Wasn't that what we were thinking when we made these science fiction? Uh, oh, hell, you read me. Like that? So you read me now. Affirmative day. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Helen. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Yeah. AI was supposed to help us with our decision making. Um, but what is the state of AI based decision making today? Surely, if we can beat the grandmaster in chess or the world champion in Go, um, if we can actually beat humans at Flappy Bird, I'm sure we're pretty good at being able to help with decision making, right? It sounds like we should be there. The problem, though, is for us to play Flappy Bird, we have to play it a million times. We have to actually learn and observe and experience the universe of possibility. If something changes, if it levels up and we've never trained on that, we're in trouble. So, no, the state of AI today is not where it should be when it comes to helping us with decision making. So let's backtrack and take a look at what decision making is all about in the first place. When we make a decision, we observe a context. And within that context, we decide what we want to do out of a number of different actions that are available to us. We don't just randomly pick an action. We pick the actions using a strategy that allows us to optimize outcomes. So, we've experienced things in the past. The top left-hand corner is our set of experiences, our memories. We build a mental model of that, and then we start strategizing against the mental model. We're not really going out there and strategizing against the real world. That's costly, it takes time. We're actually strategizing against what we've built, what our understanding of the world is. Then, of course, when the context presents itself, we use the strategy that we've just developed to make a decision against the real world and observe the results. We take those results and improve our model of the world. And that cycle goes on and on and on. So let's look at the, what constitutes this decision loop. Part of this is that mental model. We can call that a predictor. It takes the context and, out, and, and the action. So here's the decision. What would this decision mean? What would the outcome of this decision mean? We can build that today. This is standard data science. If we had a set of context action pairs from decisions we've made in the past, and we could associate the outcomes of those decisions, then we can use logistic regression or backprop uh, neural networks and build a model. What about the strategy itself? This strategy takes the context, gives us an output, an action to take that optimizes the outcomes that we're looking for. Well, we can actually use a technique called evolutionary computation to do that. Why evolutionary computation? The way this system works is it generates many, many, many candidate strategies. And it tries them all out against our mental model, against that predictor. And tries to find the best ones by taking the ones that are doing better, 
taking bits and pieces of those strategies, putting them together into the next generation of strategies to try out and goes on doing that for generations. Remember, we have all the time of the world because we're really not trying stuff against the real world. We're trying stuff against this surrogate of the real world. What's really nice about this approach is it is multi-objective. So it allows us to tackle problems that have multiple objectives that are not necessarily aligned. And that's the nature of many, many business problems out there. So we put it all back together again and we do have a decision loop system that allows us to model the decisions that we've made in the past, strategize against that mental model, and then take that to the real world and loop back and bring our experiences back into the real world. Let's look at what this might look like visually. This is a very simple model of that decision making. The x-axis is the context. The y-axis is the action that I need to take on that in that context. And the real world, the absolute truth, if you knew everything about the world, is that halo in the background. Now, what we're going to do, each dot is an experience. We're going to start experiencing this world. Remember, our system, our AI, knows nothing about the real world. But we're going to start experiencing the real world. And as we do so, our mental model of the real world is going to start forming and shaping closer and closer to what reality is. But at the same time, we are making the best decision we can. We are strategizing against that model and making the best decision. Now, in this particular case, I've said that the best decision always is action equals zero. And you can see that gradually, the system is converging on always picking the action that aligns with the y equals zero line. And in the process, not only the background is starting to look like the uh, ground truth, but I also didn't really expend a lot of cost. Okay, in the beginning, I maybe made a few bad decisions, but they really helped me understand what the world looks like. After a while, I was making pretty good decisions here. Okay, but what does that mean to our businesses who are looking to augment their decision making? Um, let's take a look at a demo of such a system. If we can go to my laptop here. There you go. So I'm an insurance company. I'm an underwriter in the insurance company. And this is the most important decision loop that I go through every day in insurance. It's underwriting. And I'm underwriting properties. So I come to a dashboard where I typically make my decisions. It has the cases that uh, are still open and I'm going to take them. And these are all the properties with the agents associated with those properties that I need to go through today to make a decision as to whether or not to underwrite and, and how. And you can see already that the AI is marked at least one of them as don't even go there. This is not a good idea to insure. But uh, let's pick one of them that the AI says, uh, go ahead and ensure. We're going to click on that again. In routine decision making, this is the context. I'd be looking at information about this property and researching it even more, and maybe looking at some of the historical data around this property, um, and ultimately making this decision that the AI has already given me as a suggestion. It's saying, insure it at 80 to 90K premium. And with 85% confidence, I can tell you that the probability for the customer to buy this insurance from us is 90%. But at the same time, we've minimized the loss ratio, 20%. This is measured three months out. So three months later, this property is only going to incur 20% loss ratio. And of course, this is decision augmentation. So the user can always click on the scratch pad and try um, other values and see uh, you know, what they would do in those other um, circumstances and ultimately approve the prescription. Um, and then the boss of all of the underwriters is sitting at a dashboard and viewing how they've done so far. This is something they would do. This is insights for them. Uh, they're kind of looking at the history of uh, the outcomes. They're also looking at how the predictor is gradually getting better and better, because we can always take the last predictor and run it on the newest um, ob real observations. It can also tell us how the prescriptor has been working historically, regardless of whether the underwriter actually used it. And ultimately, how often are the underwriters actually using what the prescriptor tells them? And of course, they have a say as to how they want the system to operate, what they want it to 
optimize. There are three outcomes here. This is multi-objective. If this year, for them, it's more important to reduce costs, they can always click here and reduce costs. But remember, they can't change all of these values. If they change one, the other two are going to change. This is giving us the art of the possible. It's telling us if you do want to reduce costs, the best that you can do on win-loss ratio and loss ratio is this other thing. Let's go back to the um, slide deck. Okay, so this is how we usually look at these problems before we AI enable them, and I'm going to have a master class in which we're going to do this live uh, with, with some of the folks that are um, there later this afternoon. But uh, there is this question, why should we even do this? Why should we use AI to augment our decision making? There are a number of um, good reasons. One is uh, making decisions in the face of multiple objectives is hard. We kid ourselves thinking that um, we're good at it. It's not very easy. And this system does allow us to find, as I said, the art of the possible. And then, of course, uh, this is the most principled way of using historical decision data to inform how we should decide in the future. And it mimics how we do this as a human, too. So why not use it to augment us? Then, of course, is the data. We don't have to go off and collect tons and tons of data right up front. We don't have to observe the whole universe of possibilities before we create a model that works for us. We can gradually and incrementally collect the data, and in fact, the AI is helping us. The prescriptor is telling us what to go check. And by virtue of doing that, it's actually observing the world too. And then the world changes, but we're capturing that. We're bringing that back in and improving our decision-making, our mental model. So it's much better than creating a model and throwing it over the, uh, the wall. This reduces the cost as well because it's quite efficient. And of course, we can use this technique to play Flappy Bird. So all is not lost. Uh, if we start and the only observation is just one game, you can see that the system kind of thinks that you know, the pipes levitate and move around and all that kind of good stuff. But after only a few games, you can see that the system is now more consistent about its view of what Flappy Bird is, actually, what the environment looks like. And after a mere 200 iterations, we actually solved the problem. Remember, using DeepQ Learning, it took us a million iterations to get here. So, I want to leave you with this question. What is the most impactful decision loop in your business? And are you prepared to look at the hierarchy of decision-making that goes on in your business and use an AI to help make it more accurate, more efficient, and create better outcomes? Thank you.